So we're going to get right into it. Um, my name's Emma Cameron. Apparently I'm on one of the programs about six times. This is the actual presentation that I'm giving. I'm not doing the other ones. Uh, so uh, we're going to be not using the clicker. All right, so we're going to be talking about um, governance and um, in big projects, uh, what we've learnt from our prototypes during our time, and what we did after go live, which is often where websites um, tend to die. So uh, I work for the Single Digital Presence Project, which is a Victorian government um, project. Uh, now the, the project was actually funded for one department, the Department of Premier and Cabinet, and to consolidate 38 websites. And what happened was everyone got really excited and other de departments started sort of jumping on at the same time and our executive director is not, is not a no man. So um, we had to juggle all of that with um, sort of no, not really a sort of significantly expanded sort of budget or team. So this is what it used to look like before. You can see it's all over the place. It's a very special sort of old Vic Victoria police site down the bottom, which is pretty special. And we're, change we, we're changing because it's just, it's hard for, for Victorians if everything's different. And it's hard for um, public servants as well. It means we're not secure, we're not accessible, things aren't getting updated. It's hard to learn how to use them. So this is what it's looking like now. You can see there's much more consistency. Uh, you can start to see sort of, yeah, those consistent design elements. Uh, this is a photo of me in grade one. Now, I've been told I probably didn't have to circle it. I'm still the tall girl with the big fringe. Nothing much has changed. Still read a lot. I was, I was the kid that got signed up for the piano lessons when everyone else was playing, you know, netball and football and basketball. So not much has changed. Uh, now, this down the corner, that's my friend Barb. We've known each other since we were three. Uh, we're very different people. She's the tiny kid in the bottom row. She was playing sport all the time. Uh, she you know, left school when she was 16. She wasn't super academic. And just by chance, um, she ended up retraining as a family violence support officer at the same time that I was doing this project. And one of the areas that we have content in is, is actually for family violence support officers and for the family violence reform that the Victorian government's doing. And that for me was a really important touch point. Um, she's doing this really hard job where she's, you know, supporting people through this really traumatic time of their life. And, you know, our content was complicated. It used words like tranche. It, you know, it wasn't sort of being used by the people it needed to be used for. So that was, you know, having an actual person when things got hard was, um, was really, I think, is what got a lot, of, a lot of the project team through the project. So this is our high-level uh, website classification tool. You can see from the big yellow dot that our strategy was really around feeding as much as we could into our main Victorian government website, vic.gov.au. Uh, there are some sites where we needed an extra level of independence, things like commissioners, where they're supposed to be a bit separate from government. We have the same content repository for these, what we call semi-independent sites. Uh, but um, they have a, still a kind of look and feel of a different website. And then we have fully independent websites, things like Victoria Police, the Governor's website, where um, it's separate. We actually, what we're finding is we've, we've got too many independent sites at the moment and too many separate content repositories because we had sort of a lot of departments opting in, so we're actually looking to consolidate even more over time. So our first website was the governor's website. Uh, now, um, what worked well when we ran that was uh, we used Hotjar to get some surveys, to get some insights into her, who was coming to the site and why they were coming. We used a technique called pair writing. Can I just get a show of hands? People have heard of that. Yeah, great. So it's similar to pair coding. You sit people down together and you make sure they're collaborating. And just anything you wear, you can collaborate. Is gonna, it's gonna, you're gonna get better outcomes. And it, it was really important for us that we transition skills over. A lot of the people we, we were dealing with who were content owners, they looked after a website as part of like six other things that they were doing. So we really wanted to pass on skills. 
Uh, the next time we did it, we made sure we had content approver sessions because often where things go down, go wrong, is that people say, oh yeah, it'll be fine, and then the person who has to sign everything off says, why have you changed this? I don't understand. Make it go back to the way it was before. So we really were, sh were careful to brief the right people, and that made the, the process much, much smoother in future. Uh, photos, we learnt a lot about photos as well. Uh, it's, photos are a big deal and they're actually hard to get, I think, a good photos across the board. So if you're not making sure that your areas you have for photos are really kind of flexible and will work for, you know, for most types of photos, then, you know, your website's going to be hard to use. So the next big phase was our prototype, our alpha.vic.gov.au. Uh, it was the first time I'd uh, had a, a prototype of a, a site, an alpha and a beta running live. Uh, we had a sample of content um, in our sort of equality area, like women's equality, veterans, um, LGBTIQ, uh, and what we call our journeys across government to help people navigate across government. And then our beta, we brought in our grants information. I thought we were going to get lots of user insights from running an alpha. You can see from the graph Unsurprisingly, there's a lot of public servants and digital professionals giving us inform information which is useful. We want to hear from them, but what we found was when we flicked live, we got just this whole set of different data. So, um, but it, what it was really good for was for managing stakeholders to have something to go, this is what you're going to get, this is what it looks like, you can click around on it and see it. That helps so much. And we were running this project with a, a core content team of three people so we wouldn't have been able to like have that many websites sort of migrating across if we hadn't been sort of moving things across in a like piece by piece so having the prototype was great for that uh, navigation we've changed significantly uh, when we first went live we had that kind of blocky um, look and feel uh, now we've got sort of two different sets of navigation we've got um, one where we've got a sort of card scenario where we feature just sort of really important items and we've got a navigation on the right hand side. You can see from the heat map that people interact really well with that. Uh, and our second form is again what we call a journey which really steps people out um, in terms of actually what they have to do step by step in the real world. So, and that's, um, we're getting really good feedback on both of those approaches. Uh, our taxonomy, our, how we're kind of connecting information together uh, has been really important in terms of um, making sure our content types like news and events and grants can be dynamically displayed on a page uh, to move away from sort of having to sort of manually go through and add like a, an event on different pages. Uh, what we find if things are too separate, people don't find them. But if it's manual, then it takes us too much time to keep adding them to pages. So having that kind of dynamic um, sh feature is really useful through tagging. Uh, we also have these little, um, they look like buttons. You can click through and you can sort of see all the information that's, um, that's tagged to the one topic. No one's really using those. So that's an experiment that sort of didn't didn't work so well. Uh, around this time, uh, Department of Treasury and Finance um, opted into the platform, uh, and one of their sort of major websites is their procurement website, and um, that's, as you can imagine, very complex, very detailed. It hadn't been touched for a really long time. Uh, they were really adamant that it needed to be done by the end of financial year, which gave us less than two months to, to work on the project. Uh, we brought in a vendor to help us to do that, but um, what we found was we didn't have that kind of, with our department, we had our governance model signed off by our secretary, which is like the highest kind of level of the department, and we did a big road show with the executives, and we sort of briefed everyone really thoroughly. It still, still, we still had problems, but it just meant we, we had less problems. What happened with a new department was uh, we started talking about how we wanted to change things and make things more user-centric, and people got really worried about things like plain English and, and just making changes in general, and the timelines were really tight. Um, and it caused a lot of tension. And you can see from the graph when we went live, um, we've got a was this page helpful fe 
feature on every page and we weren't getting, getting great feedback. But we didn't give up. We, um, we, sort of, we collaborated with DTF and we were like, what do we need to do to, um, to kind of keep moving? Um, and we did, a, did some really intensive training and that really, one of our kind of more vocal stakeholders actually emailed um, the, the trainer afterwards and said, I'm really sorry I gave you a hard time. I understand now what you were trying to do. Uh, and um, things like um, focusing on accessibility and migrating over some of the extra content with an extra resource to just keep chipping away at, at, um, at making the content better. And, um, and that department's content owners are, are really uh, att attending our community of practice now and, and, are, and are much more engaged and happy. Uh, so our kind of final things that we did with our key features and our main site, uh, we moved our corporate website fully into our vic.gov.au. That actually um, gave us an increase of 85% extra traffic by bringing it in. No one really wants to go to a corporate website. Like they're pretty, they're, they can be quite dry, but we actually had some useful, interesting information on there that was buried. So by bringing it into our main site, we really bubbled that up. Uh, we created a publications template. Uh, there's a lot of publications in government. They're usually PDFs. It means you can't look at them properly on your mobile. It's not good for accessibility. It's not good for, you know, I'm sure you all know the reasons. So having an actual template to help people um, has been great. We had our annual report, HTML first, for the first time this year. We've got about 20 publications in that template. It's still a change journey, but we're starting to see real progress. Um, we did some specific features for um, Aboriginal Victorians as well because we have that, we're responsible for that content. Uh, we've got a war, an alert for, to notify people if there's an image of someone who's passed away. Uh, and we've also made the um, acknowledgement of country more prominent at the sort of request of, of Aboriginal Victorians. Uh, so workflow, obviously a lot of authors, this is my one and only meme because my product manager said you've got to have a meme in there. <laughs> um, so, it, and it act, but actually is a lot like that and we really took that into account with workflow. The reality is that um, you've got one person who's logged into the system, they have to send it to their manager, their manager sends it to their manager, there's about 20 stakeholders, they need to have a look at it. Sometimes the minister's office gets involved, they need to see it. So we, um, the preview was really important to us. We set that up to be sort of, to be easy to access. You don't have to be, you know, logged in and trained for five days to use the preview. It's got a little alert, so you know it's a draft because before we had that, people freaked out a lot that they were looking at something that was live that wasn't supposed to be. Uh, yeah, and, then, and outside of that, we're, we're uh, we've got alerts that come through for our team so that we know when jobs are coming through because we're a publishing gateway for people and that's integrated with JIRA. Uh, so we're all here because we think community is important uh, and that's been really important to us as well and, and I think one of the key things that um, helps our project to be successful is that we're connecting people up with each other uh, we're sharing the research uh, that we do and also how other people are using the site and that's um, really kind of helping people to, um, to feel like they're supported, which is, you know, everyone wants that, don't they, at the end of the day. Uh, so we've also, since we've gone live, we've been um, responding to needs. There's been a lot of different authorities and agencies that have gone live uh, since the project. Uh, normally those would be separate sites. They're now housed on our uh, main vic.gov.au site. And you can see they're, you know, they're slightly different, but they've all got that same look and feel. And again, they're much more discoverable on the main, on the main platform. And again, they're small teams, they're panicking because the things have to, you know, they're about to you know, go live with a new authority really quickly and they've got our team there to, to help them through a journey of, you know, digital. Uh, campaigns are another really common thing in government. Um, sometimes they have advertising attached, sometimes they don't. Uh, they're the most popular content that we have currently. Again, um, these are within the vic.gov.au website now. The ones that are working really well 
unsurprisingly, they have a really strong call to action and they have a, a communication strategy attached to them. Um, even some of the, like the graduates programs are, are less, you know, less flash looking one, but um, that resulted in, it was about a 185% increase in um, applications um, by um, putting this kind of campaign together. So it, it, it really got results for the, um, for the people who did it. Um, how we've been keeping quality, the Was This Page helpful? It's, I just, I can't understate enough like how, how useful that is. It's a really simple example of how we use that feedback to make improvements. Uh, we uh, look after the information about Victorian um, flowers and, you know, all the, you know, weird Victorian things that we have. And apparently there's also a tartan, which we didn't even know until this piece of feedback came through. So that's now information that we host on the site. Uh, we've got um, Google Analytics dashboards set up now so that people can access their um, information about how they're, um, how they're tracking. And we have our, um, actually, people like our analytics experts and our service design experts come to our community practice. So people have specific questions. They can connect with the experts and, um, and get support and help. And again, having that model where people um, can talk a little bit more one-on-one -on -one and it's less kind of presenting at people, that's, that's been working really well for the community. And we do things like accessibility audits and SEO audits to, to really highlight to people what's working and what's not working. So that's, um, yeah, it's, it's, people are juggling a lot of things in government, I think, and Victorian government at the moment has uh, been very active. So uh, yeah, it's a case of um, understanding that people are juggling multiple jobs and, and supporting them. Uh, so where, what are we looking at next? Uh, we just launched um, some online training on our content management system because we were take, a lot of our time was being taken up with um, doing basic training on the CMS and then often people would just show up and they'd watch us do things and then they'd go away and they um, would forget because they weren't doing it themselves. So this is forcing them to actually log in, create a page, um, and watch the videos. That's very, it's, we've only just put that um, page up, so it's very new, so it's very experimental, but we're hope, but the plan is that um, that gives, it frees us up more to do more sort of training and mentoring in the kind of higher level digital skills, like how do you write a content strategy and how do you become a good product manager, those sorts of things. Uh, we're uh, really focusing on those journeys that I talked about earlier of how do you step people through uh, like real life, their, you know, help them through their real life and connect them with the governance services that are available because that's generally the feedback we get is, ah, oh, that's really useful, I didn't really know about that. So how, do, how can we bubble up the, the support that's available for people in a way that makes sense for them? Uh, a Big focus for our next 12 months is going to be our back end. Um, as always, when you're doing a project and you're scrambling, you focus on your front end user and you give them lots of love. And um, we've, we um, didn't give quite as much love to our, our content authors as we always wanted to, but um, with the time constraints, there's, there's definitely some improvements that we want to make to our back end admin. Um, we're also looking at collaborative governance, or um, one of our developers was like, oh, you're open sourcing your governance. But what we want to do is we're moving from like our department being the department that looks after vic.gov.au to really saying this is the website for everyone. How can we work together and, um, and make sure that that the website is um, is useful for everyone, and, and we're and we're using everyone's expertise as well because there's, you know, there's strong web teams in every department, and um, we know that there's things that we can learn from them as well as as things that they can learn from us. So, yeah, to sum up, the good old sum up. Um, the governance and the rules are important, but also like talking to people and, and being really human is important as well. The comms and the training is like, I can't, yeah, again, it's just, it's, it's just really, really important. 
the more lean you can be, the better. I mean, it's obvious, but um, the, we overcooked it with the navigation and now we're sort of looking at how we can simplify. Um, and the more you can consolidate, the better, your, better results you're going to get. And um, keep sharing what works and what doesn't. And the more evidence you have, the better. Um, people do like evidence and listen to evidence. Not always, but um, it, it, it gets you wins um, much more than kind of not having anything to talk about. Uh, this is just a little um, list of some um, detailed resources. We're, um, we're pretty open source with um, a lot of our stuff, so um, it's... Uh, a lot of the detail of how we did things is publicly available, so this will get shared around, no doubt. And um, yeah, I think we're up for questions. Um, I'd love to know what the team makeup was for with a project this big was. Yeah, um, at the moment. Are we at 20 people? I'm looking at my project manager. <laughs> Team makeup. As in the number of people or the peop actual roles? Yeah. So there's, yeah, so we've got um, one UX designer, um, one uh, visual designer. Uh, how many developers are we at now? Six. Uh, and three people in the content team, uh, communications manager. Uh, Scrum Master, Project Manager, Tech Lead. Um, we've got, yeah, we've got one person on support. Do, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very, it's very lean. And, uh, yeah, and, qual and a QA, yeah, two people on QA, one part-time, yeah. Um, thanks very much for that. It's an excellent uh, presentation and well done. Um, I've got so many questions, but I'll just ask one. <laughs> um, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but you said that your main site and your um, semi-independent sites share a common uh, yes. uh, content database, is that yes, right? Yes, that's right. Um, how do you manage that and do people have sort of access to certain areas of it and... Yeah, how does that work? Basically? At the moment it's open. Uh, we're looking at... Um, making it less open uh, because um, it does make things more difficult if we've got sensitive content. Uh, so um, we're in the middle of a piece of work to, um, yeah, to make sure that um, people only see the content that's relevant to them, yeah. Um, so I'm um, yeah more on the development side of things, um, but like we have worked with um, various government sites in Queensland, particularly, um, and I just kind of always wondered because it's kind of interesting to see the other side of it. Like we kind of uh, do a lot of development and, and UX and UI and interface and everything, but then from what actually happens from the government point of view, um, and there's probably like a plethora of questions I could ask, but just one in particular, I kind of always wondered like. Um, the was this page helpful kind of feature um, just like kind of what are some of the experiences or kind of the, the process of workflow of what happens when someone submits what actually happens I've actually like never from being a developer heard anything I assume you know that's all internal but um, I'm just always curious about kind of what, what happens? goes on when that is feature is used yeah we um our process, obviously everyone's got different processes, is um, we, someone will check it on a semi-regular basis, but we have a formal process of a full review every month. Uh, we go through, we look at what's actionable, uh, and we connect with the content authors if we need, need to around what changes we can make. Uh, we also track it every month, so we look at how sites are performing against each other. Uh, and uh, yeah, and and use it as a bit of a benchmark. I mean, it's obviously it's a really rough tool because you're getting feedback about the the policy, like the content itself. You know, like 
people love a public holiday. If you're giving them money, they love it. But it, do, it does give you a bit of a, a framework for is your website, you know, hitting the mark or not. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.